know I thought I was going to get away without doing a San Diego Comic Con video this year and then Marvel showed up. <clears throat> okay. I am not going to spend time addressing anything other than Marvel. I don't feel like doing a full rundown. I know some other trailers have dropped lately. It Chapter 2 dropped. Uh, the Harley Quinn animated thing, that trailer dropped. Like, fine, whatever. I'm going to focus on Marvel because I feel like they brought the most substance uh, in terms of stuff that we didn't already know about. Uh, or at least stuff that we didn't already know about that I cared about. There was other stuff that went on at Comic-Con that I either have less investment in or didn't seem like as big a deal, at least to me. So, because I am lazy and it's late when I'm recording this, let's uh, take a look at the lineup and what we're actually dealing with. So, we got a whole bunch of release dates and some specific films that are coming out. On May 1st, 2020, we have the Black Widow movie, still believed to be a prequel, though exactly where it falls on the timeline, not currently sure about that. November 6th, 2020, The Eternals. February 12th, 2021, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. First time we're getting the full title on that. May 7th, 2021, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Also first time we're getting the subtitle there. November 5th, 2021, Thor, Love and Thunder. We also had a number of dates into 2022, but to try and even guess at those, because we'd have to, official titles haven't been announced, would involve speculation that I honestly don't feel like doing. So I'm not going to touch on any of that. And I am mostly going to speak on the uh, films, but I will say Disney Plus premiere is also announced. Fall 2020, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Spring 2021, WandaVision. Also spring 2021 is Loki. Also spring 2021 is What If. They are bringing in a whole lot of like notable voice voices from the franchise up to this point for that, so that should be interesting. And then fall 2021 is Hawkeye. They are really not messing around with the Disney Plus. And also, the announcement that Blade will be back and played by Mahershala Ali, which is good. I was kind of afraid that Mahershala was, you know, burned off in uh, Luke Cage season one. But uh, this is a very cool use. And I think, I like, I don't want to presume, presume what Mahershala Ali is going to do. Mahershala Ali is a very good actor with a very good range. But I do don't think he's going to try and do what Wesley Snipes did with the part. I have a feeling he's going to go for a bit of a different angle. I'm going to be really curious to see what that is. So, absolutely down for that. But, let's get into these specific announced films. The most, the one that we actually know the most about substantively right now is the Black Widow one. But, honestly, until we see a trailer, it's hard to know too many of the details, like I said, about timeline or full tone or vibe. It's obviously going to be more of a spy thing. I'll be interested to see how grounded they go with it because we haven't had a more grounded uh, Marvel movie possibly ever. There's always at least one major... Um, you know, fantastical elements. So it would be really cool to do something really grounded and just spy-ish. I guess the closest we came would have been Winter Soldier. But, uh, you know, even that one had a Nazi scientist brain in computers from the 70s. So, you know, and, and I'm not mocking any of that. I just think it'd be interesting to strip all that down and go basic, which is what I'm kind of hoping that a Black Widow will be. Eternals, I have absolutely no idea or clue. I will say, and this is something that actually has started sinking in with me lately. Supposedly, we're going to be getting our first LGBTQ plus character in the Eternals. And can I be honest about something? It's actually going to bug me a little bit. Bit if the first LGBTQ plus, you know, non uh, non cisgender or non hetero major character is going to be some kind of alien because the Eternals aren't humans, that will actually bug me because the franchise has been going on too long to be pulling the you know alien or otherworldly being as analog for minority group thing. Like this many films in, just give me a human being. Give me. Give me someone who who would have gone through the experience of what it is to be anything that is not cisgender and heterosexual in the society we currently live in. I'd really kind of prefer that at this point. I'm not going to say no, you know, to a, a, a queer character showing up in The Eternals, but 
it, the more I think about it, the more it actually kind of annoys me that that's the route they're going to go for it. But, you know, we have to start somewhere, so I'll take it. So, going on from that, um, so Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. That title actually potentially a really big deal, because when you think Marvel, you think Ten Rings. What do you think? You think the Mandarin. Now, here's the funny thing about that. I never, assuming that that actually is what it indicates, at the very least it's going to be the return of that criminal organization that we haven't heard from, I think, well, I guess since uh, Iron Man 3, and so that would be, you know, at the bare minimum, but it wouldn't make sense to bring that back if they aren't going to do something with the Mandarin, and I never really thought they were going to do that. Now, a lot of Marvel fans thought that they would do something with the Mandarin because we had Iron Man 3 with the whole reveal of, oh, what you thought was the Mandarin really isn't, and it's all a big con, uh, and then later in one of the one-offs, they were called the one-shots, it was called Hail to the King, it was implied that there actually is a real Mandarin who is ticked off that his name got dragged through the mud for this ridiculous scam. Here's the thing, though, and this is, I think, one of those times, or had been up to this point, one of those times that there was kind of a disconnect between the hardcore fans and the mainstream audiences, because hardcore fans always took that as a thing of like, oh, that means we're going to get the real Mandarin someday, and I had always kind of assumed, like, get... Folks, that was just a bone they, they threw us because most mainstream audiences, you know, the one who act, the ones who actually push these films into, well, now Endgame being the biggest money-making film of all time, uh, they didn't watch the one shot. They don't know there's a quote-unquote real Mandarin, and they don't care. But I guess they're actually going to do something with it, which I'll be very curious to see how they handle that. Knowing what the Mandarin is like on the page and how the character can and has been uh, used in some of the stereotyping that the character can fall into, they are they are wading into some heavy waters between just Shang-Chi himself as a character being, you know, from the somewhat exploitative, you know, influenced by the somewhat exploitative era of Kung Fu as a, you know, being a thing, um, you know, as a, as a genre, you know, kung fu films and all that stuff. It, he was very much inspired out of that. That's already kind of potentially heavily laden with stuff if you're not careful. Then to add the Mandarin to that, I'm like, well, you're, uh, you're taking on a challenge. I mean, props to your ambition, I suppose. But uh, I'll be really curious to see what that, what that ends up being. So Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Now this thing, all right. Every single time this sort of thing comes up, people tell me, oh, see, you were wrong. They are going to do a multiverse. Because I have I have said, well, I've said most emphatically that I don't ever want them to do a multiverse and that I don't think they will. Now people will rub my nose in this. But here's the thing. Doctor Strange already did a multiverse. And the multiverse that Doctor Strange does is not what I am saying they should never do. Because the multiverse that Doctor Strange does is completely different planes of existence. You know, when you get into things like the quantum realm, the mirror universe, the, the dark universe, and who, who knows what kind of trippy stuff we're going to be getting in this, that's not what I'm talking about. The multiverse I don't ever want to see is the parallel universe thing, where it's like, here's Earth as you know, with the characters you know, except... They're gender swapped, except they're all pirates, except they're zombies for some stupid reason that people think should, would make a good movie, but it would be friggin' terrible. So, you know, that's what I never want to see. The kind of multiverse stuff that Doctor Strange has already done, I'm so down for it, especially because I really want to see how creative they can get with it. They, it got fairly creative in the first one, but I want to see them go all out. I want to see them go nuts. I want to see them go trippy. And the director is saying that he wants to take it in the direction of making a legitimately scary Marvel movie. And I do kind of want to see what that looks like. Not gonna lie. So that then, of course, brings us to the big headline with Thor, Love and Thunder. First of all, Taika Waititi's back, so we're going to get the lighter tone. But also, we have Jane Foster returning, which means Natalie Portman is back. And they do appear to be doing the storyline where Jane Foster wields Mjolnir and takes on the mantle of Thor. Now, I have very mixed feelings about this. So, I have actually read the first volume of the Goddess of Thunder uh, line. 
Um, I read the, the trade, the collected trade of that. Actually, Liz and I read that together and we reviewed it on our podcast, Tough Like a Girl, over on the Fire and Water Podcast Network. Woohoo! Plug in my stuff that is somewhere other than this channel. Um, but we both liked it pretty well. We had little niggling complaints here and there, but for the most part, we both enjoyed it. And I, and what more I've seen about that character and the way it was done, I actually do kind of like it. I think there's a lot of potential in it and a lot that can be done with it. My reservation is with Natalie Portman specifically, not because she's a bad actress. I actually think when she's passionate about the work, Natalie Portman is fantastic, but that's the thing. She needs to be passionate about what it is she is doing. And her performances in these films, especially in Thor The Dark World, she did not seem like she really wanted to be there. Like, th there were a handful of actors in the first, you know, kind of wave of these films who they were there because their agent told them it was going to be a good idea. And Natalie Portman was one. Uh, Christopher Eccleston was another. Uh, you know, the, you did, uh, arguably uh, Hugo Weaving. You know, you just had actors who you could tell they weren't passionate about this story. They just thought it would be good for their resume or their agent talked them into it. Now, as the franchise went on and got so big, yeah, <laughs> people wanted in, but and they didn't have to convince people to come in on these things nearly as much anymore. But I was never shocked that we hadn't seen Natalie Portman again because I really just got the feeling she didn't want to play in this playground. So her coming back makes me nervous because it, I know that if, they can find an angle that she actually is excited about and goes all in on her performance the way that she can do when she cares. It could be really good, but I've already seen her kind of, you know, be serviceable and not try to be more than that in this role already. So that that makes me nervous. As far as the story itself goes, it'll be interesting to see because Thor is not in the same state he is now that he was in the comics when this happened. So, oh boy, I'm not going to go through the whole background of everything, but basically in the comics, Thor, um, who started going by Odin's son to distinguish him from Thor, female Thor, who was actually wielding Mjolnir, uh, he had actually become unworthy. He couldn't lift the hammer anymore. And then Jane, and actually initially we didn't even know who it was. We just knew that a woman was wielding the hammer. Um, and it wouldn't be revealed to be Jane Foster until sometime later. I uh, hear they're probably going to reveal it right off the bat because like anyone who reads the comics knows who that, that's who it is. It's not worth trying to do it as a, as a reveal or anything. But you know, he was, he was in a state of disgrace in a lot of ways. And one could argue he kind of is in the movies because, like, Asgard's gone and he's kind of, you know, lost, you know, he, he obviously uh, went through hell following Infinity War, but he's not really in the same place as a character as he was in the comics. So it's going to be interesting to see how he reacts somebody else taking up his mantle because I don't think it's going to be a direct, a direct parallel to how it was done in the comics, which honestly shouldn't even need to be pointed out anymore when it comes to Marvel because they almost never just transport over the story. They take a title or maybe a core concept and then very much do their own thing. If you ever read Civil War versus watching Civil War, not the same experience at all. And other times they'll just pull a title and leave it at that and it'll have nothing to do with the source material. So I'm pretty sure they're just taking this concept and especially someone like Taika Waititi who seems to have a bit of a more free flow vibe to what he does. I'm sure we're going to end up with something that is not just a direct translation from the comic. So I'm very curious about it. I hope it's good, but just you got to show me that Natalie Portman cares because I felt like definitely the last time and a bit the first time that she appeared in this part, it felt like she didn't. And it didn't ruin either of those movies or at least, you know, wasn't necessarily the biggest issue <laughs> with either of those movies, but... Yeah, I'm nervous. I think that's everything I wanted to cover as far as the Marvel stuff goes. I wanted to build up to the Thor thing because it was getting the most dig. But 
What do you think about any of these announcements or whatever one I inevitably miss because I always forget to talk about something and then it's the first thing that gets left in the comments. So go ahead, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. There's a whole bunch of stuff to do as well. There's the like button. There's a subscribe. You could share this with a friend. I'd appreciate that as well. Um, I have a Patreon if you wish to support this channel and help me cover my bills and um, a whole bunch of other links besides. Give them a click. They take you places, uh, but also you don't have to because at the end of the day, folks, you're the council. I'm just running the meetings, and until next time, this council is adjourned.